Welcome to Business Blurb, you and the Dropouts podcast. My name is Brandon Cox, and I'm here with my co-host, Devin Carley. What's up, Devin? What's going on, everybody? Today, we have a very special guest. His name is Eli Zide. He's the founder of Streetwear Empire Habits 365. Thanks for coming on. Hey, guys. Nice to be on here. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, um, of so, obviously, you got the Streetwear Empire Habits 365. Um like right off the bat, why and like how did you? I mean, you started this so long. What what year did you start having? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we started in August of 2017. So almost four years ago. So wow, that's crazy. Yeah. I feel like it's been longer, but I don't know. Maybe not. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's it. The time has flew by. It's kind of crazy that it's like almost four years ago. I know. I, yeah. I remember. I was so young. Yeah. It. Wow. What um, is this like message be- behind this name and everything? Yeah, so right. Habits 365, basically the reason why I wanted to start a clothing brand is to obviously spread a positive message. So initially when I was thinking of a streetwear brand to name, I thought of the word habits because everybody has habits. But the problem with the habits is that not everyone's habits are good habits. So our brand strictly mm-hmm. encourages positivity and good habits. 365 days a year because at the end of the day your habits do determine your success and the the better and stronger you make your habits the more successful you'll be in all in all realms of life so i think i think it's a super important message that we continue to pump out um yeah i agree and i think it's i think just as a clothing brand it's important to have a message like that just because there's Mm -hmm. not not so much that there's so much competition but there's so many clothing brands that are like buy this because it's cool but like with habits it's like you're you're kind of like representing something beyond that and it's not just like a shirt it's like right there's a whole message behind it's a movement yeah yeah exactly and like i I see it firsthand like i don't know spencer had me join that like facebook group that one Mm -hmm. time and it's like these people are like into it they're like they live for this stuff which is yeah i think it's really cool so like going off of spencer um you and Spencer founded this. How is it like work out with like a brother brother duo running a business? Is yeah, frustrating yeah. or see no, no. Ass? Honestly, like I thought at first when going, because I mean, like as you guys probably know, like family business isn't always easy. I mean, I've seen like I mean, this is just a little example, but I've been into pizza places where it's a family run business and the mom's fighting with the kid. They're they're all and then they're the uncles there they're screaming at each other it's it's a bunch of it's it's a bunch of nonsense but with this it's actually we we don't really get into that many disagreements and the disagreements we do get into it's educated disagreements meaning that it's just like oh what color should this shirt be yellow or blue to drop on our newest release it's 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 little stuff like that but i mean really it's 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 pretty easy running a company with with my brother but that that's just us though i know it's it's definitely not easy to run a company with family but i mean for us we've got we've gotten pretty lucky to have it work out completely so yeah for sure but with like that being said i know you guys have super specific roles it's not like you and spencer like Mm -hmm. doing the exact same thing it's kind of the complete opposite so what are What's your day to day, and I guess what's Spencer's day to day, if you know? Yeah, yeah. So pr- I, I'd say for me, I'm mainly s- kind of the outreach, social media, dealing with celebrities, picking out clothing to send to ambassadors for their prize of the month, kind of stuff like that. And Spencer's role, it I'd say, is more on the front end in terms of handling ambassadors, being on top of our person that places our orders and the accounting so i'm more of he's more of the numbers and i'm more of the outreach if that if that makes sense Uh, awesome did you guys both start it or did you yeah so actually so i i started it initially and uh, about i I, i'd say two two and a half months later that's when i was like okay i cannot do this by myself it's just not it's not possible so my brother joined you and and he had past experience he had his own clothing brand like a few years ago i mean it it didn't it it didn't do so well but it was a learning experience at the end of the day and he kind of brought some of the expertise that he learned from a fail from a failed clothing company to 
to help with habits. So yeah, that it just kind of happened like that pretty much. That's awesome. Yeah, I yeah. can kind of relate. I have a brother and like I do a lot of social media with him. Mm-hmm. So I like to see like an other like another person right perspective on that. How like many years are you guys apart? Yeah, so he's four years older than me. Oh wow. Okay. So I mean not not that crazy of a difference, but I mean definitely a, a, a solid difference. But um yeah. This is like more of a question for Spencer, I guess, but he is he he's graduating this year, right? Yeah. So how is that gonna like like I mean, obviously I'm not talking to Spencer right now, yeah. but like <laughs> do you know like is he going habits full time after college? I, is he getting a I, job? Yeah, to be completely honest, I do not know. I, I don't think he's like really told anyone yet but like obviously habits is going to be a large part of the picture for the next like a pretty long time I mean that's my my plan after college is to I mean hopefully in I think in three years habits is going to be like one of the one of the top brands out there so I think I think it will be a full-time thing so but I mean in terms of right now I really don't know what his plans are but I mean I I know he's going to keep doing habits and keep doing putting the same amount of work as he is in habits then as as he is now um yeah but i i I don't really know to be honest yeah so you're in college right now too Mm -hmm. so how are you like obviously i mean depending on what college and all that stuff college is like a ton of work yeah i mean you have free time but how are you going about like budgeting your time with like are you i mean obviously covid's a thing but Mm -hmm. like uh, are you do you party or do you are you like grinding 24 like- 7 i mean honestly like i i mean this is like the top question that i've been asked so i'm i'm completely equipped to answering this um obviously like yeah like in in for example in high school i was obviously really busy i want i want a social life i want to keep blowing up this clothing brand so i kind of make a really good balance between school habits and kind of social life so I'd say it's it's been the exact same it's been in college and I'm actually a part of a fraternity and I was pledging for for three months and I still somehow like did well in school while like continuing to run habits so I'd say it's not that hard because I'm a very very I don't have OCD but like you'd think I do because I'm I'm very organized in terms of like scheduling and kind of setting aside hours, certain hours of the day where I'm doing something with habits. Like the great part about habits is it's all remote. So I don't have to like sit down for five hours and do habits work. I can split it up. Whatever needs to be done on that day. It's, it's really miscellaneous. Like it's it's very random in terms of what I'm doing every day with habits. But I just make a schedule and... Like I, I just work around that and it's it's been pretty like it's been pretty flow it's it's flowed pretty well, so Yeah. Hmm. For sure. And and also it's like I think you guys are pretty good about outsourcing. Like you're not mm-hmm. the ones shipping your stuff, you know, your no. house. So mm-hmm. like once you get to a certain point there's like you can hire VAs, you can yep. uh outsource certain things and that's kinda like No, at, yeah, outsourcing is pro is probably the most important thing about business to keep a business like fully functioning and running well i mean that's one of the reasons that we're still we're still doing well because we we're not basically we're not doing everything ourselves anymore which we were doing three years ago but we realized to to scale and really grow a company you need to have people that are doing certain things that you can't do if that makes sense. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Or you just don't have time. Like, right. That's one thing I, I totally agree with outsourcing being super important. Mm-hmm. We've definitely learned that with business blurb. Like you just mm-hmm. can't do it all. And and not only that, there's people that can do it better than yep. you mm-hmm. and faster than you. And it's just like a, a prioritization thing, but exactly. Uh, yep. Definitely an important part of business. Yeah. Yep. yep for sure. Do you use like a third party to like ship all your stuff or do you actually yeah, have yeah. your house? Yeah. That's a really good question. So pretty much we have a, we, yeah, it's kind of like a warehouse. It's more of a, it's more of a shipping center. I mean, there's, there's some differences that a lot of people don't know about, but yeah, so we, we just moved into a fulfillment center. Like I think it was summer. Yeah, it was last summer. So that really helped us 
be able to ship more orders out and thus like spend more on advertising and and mm-hmm. kind of just do more on our part. So I mean that that's made everything so much. I I can't even explain how much easier that's made made everything in the business because we we used to be shipping out of our house like fifty a hundred I like it was it was getting. It, it was getting to a certain point where we're like, okay, we need a fulfillment center. We cannot do this anymore. <laughs> and it's not, it's honestly not that expensive. Like I, I, I can't really say the exact, like, I don't know the price off the top of my head, but like all we have to pay for is the space. And then we have to pay a fixed price per item we're shipping out, but it's not, it's really not that bad. So it's definitely worth it. Um, and it makes our lives so much easier. Yeah, no, definitely. So what would you say, like, obviously you've expanded and, and you went from your house to the shipping center. Mm-hmm. Like, what is, what's your main source of sales? Is it ads? Is it just people finding you on social media? Like, I know, for example, you're always, for, I don't really look at the shopping tab on Instagram because I'm not, like, I'm not, sh- I'm not going on Instagram to shop to be completely right, honest, right. but you guys are always at the top of my shopping tab. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, uh, what you guys are paying Instagram? And I'm just yeah, no. It. So honestly, like a uh, uh, probably seventy five percent of our uh, maybe seventy. I may be um, upping that number a little bit, but are come from Facebook, Instagram advertising, and obviously, since we just got on TikTok, we're gonna look into some other sources of ads. But ha- however, Instagram and Facebook ads are known to work for conversions, but an app like Snapchat or TikTok, we don't know if that'll lead to sales, if, if you know what I mean, because it's more it's more a random kind of group of people that are seeing your ads. But Instagram and Facebook has better targeting than all all other apps. So, yeah, I'd say most of our sales are from ads. Obviously, a lot a lot of our sales are actually from ambassadors kind of sending their code to people. And then the rest is just from miscellaneous stuff like like pop, we're planning a pop-up shop pretty soon um and just kind of people from our instagram tiktok just seeing our our new releases texting campaigns as well which we've it's it's kind of like community i'm sure you guys have heard of community it's mm-hmm. and we, we we use an app called simple text and we've been utilizing the texting campaigns or, and those are those are super super successful so we're going to continue to utilize those for conversions as well. Um, but yeah, we're, we're kind of, we're continuing to source out and outsource our, our method of sales, but Facebook ads will, will always be the leader in percentage of sales just because yeah. that's, that's how the way it goes for it's e-commerce. Interesting. It's interesting. You say like that, that with, yeah. I never really thought about that with the Facebook and Instagram performing uh, better than, but like, it makes sense in a way. Cause like, I think you when I mean I'm not a huge Snapchat person myself, but I know like I feel like when you go on Snapchat, like the last thing you're gonna do is like click an ad and go buy something. I don't know. Yeah, no, and wrong. and Sna- yeah, and Snapchat has a lot of clickbait, like fake, li- 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 literally fake news that they. So I I don't think people on people that go on Snapchat and TikTok. I, I mean e- even Instagram. Like I'm not a fan of the Instagram shop function still to this day. Like I don't think it it. I mean. I'm not going to say it hasn't worked for us. I mean, we've definitely gotten sales from Instagram, but like it's more so people actually on our website, not that pe- pe- people don't want to put their credit card on Instagram. Like that's just not something people do. Like, um, yeah. yeah, no, but I, I'd say people buy from our website, not from our Instagram. Yeah. And then the sense. TikTok's interesting because yeah. it's like, it's mostly, I mean, it's definitely changing. Like, Mm-hmm. like moms and and older people and, a lot of moms <laughs> yeah getting on tiktok so it's that, yep. that in that sense it's changing but it is still like so uh like young driven i guess like it's these mm-hmm. teenagers and these teenagers aren't always equipped to pull yep. out a credit card and no buy yeah something. so yeah uh, it, there's that too so yeah it's interesting yeah how do you even like go about marketing especially if like you're on tiktok like the video concept like What's your vision on that? Yeah, so pr- pretty much from our TikTok, obviously, like I said, we we literally got started like uh, m- maybe a month ago. So we're kind of pl- we're we're we plan out kind of the whole month, 
in terms of what kind of videos we want to post. So, for example, a few days ago was pretty exciting because we had our first like really, really viral video that did really well. And that was like really great. It was basically of me drop. I mean, this this happened a few months ago, but I just decided to post it now just just because why not? Uh, dropping my gear off to to Sway Lee and to Jamie Foxx, obviously two different videos that did both did well. So it seemed like people really liked the select like the, our best performing videos so far have been our celebrities wearing the gear and actually myself on the videos because a few videos with me and it did 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 perform pretty well. So yeah, we're we want we want videos of people maybe doing skits or dancing in our gear and then we want just to post the celebrities in creative ways kind of like the jamie fox video it was like it, it was basically me driving to his his manager's house dropping off clothes and then him wearing it and people were like really interested in that so i think just kind of interactive videos with celebrities is our goal and then more interaction with our ambassadors and kind of maybe different challenges kind of honestly kind of random stuff because that a lot of random stuff goes viral on tiktok obviously like i'm not gonna say like oh we want every video to be viral because that's just not that's just not how anything works but we want to we're obviously working towards that we want we want to put out great content so that's pretty much yeah that's yeah much that. how do you even like go about like working with these celebrities you just like dm yeah them or yeah them? Yeah, so that, that's a great question. So pretty much, like, f- kind of from the, st- I mean, Brendan knows this from the start. I was, I was like, I want to get celebrities to wear my brand. It kind of started with the, with the really small. I mean, not small, but like, like bench, yeah. bench NBA players. Obviously, they're not small, but like, you know what I mean. Um, I pretty much utilized Instagram DM. Believe it or not, I just literally DM them from the account, and a lot of them got back to me. And mm-hmm. for the bigger celebrities, like the Floyd Mayweather, the baby that like those humongous people, I had met people through D. I had DM'd their people, their quote unquote people. And they kind of put me in touch with, with the team and everything. And then it kind of, it kind of kept building up from there. And I met more people that have access to like the bit, the biggest, the biggest people you can think of. And yeah, so I've I've been pretty much formed those connections in the last four years, which has been like really really exciting. You, you did a collab with Floyd. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. I was about to say, did, are you gonna like, I don't know, are you gonna run ads or like try to leverage that for the? I know, Floyd I know, I'm, I'm, yeah, we're on that right now. Actually, that, that would make a really good TikTok if you if you hit the right timing. Don't post that, but post it that like right when the hype is building up for that Uh uh-huh yeah no we're 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 thinking hey if you have any ideas feel free to tell me because we're but but we're really thinking of an idea to because i mean we 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 can do something that will go that will go crazy because i mean we don't have we have like four pictures of him and it's a video but it's not like a video of him saying anything but like i think we can still like you put music behind it yeah yeah, we can. You can, still you can just fake that, like, like do the same thing with Jamie Fox and like fake that you're driving to a Floyd Mayweather. Like, also, like you have to like throw in. The, like, I know I mm-hmm. always say this, but I don't know if anybody else is like with me. But you have to like throw in like something out of left field. That's just. Oh know, yeah. Like, like you have to say like you're going to like. I don't know. The Jake like, Paul's mansion party. Like, or like Floyd's babysitter's house to give him. <laughs> Like something like that. I mean, you don't want to like disrespect. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like I'm, I'm totally crazy. with that. Yeah, we're gonna try to put something out on TikTok, kind of closer. I believe the fight, the clown fight, is June uh, June sixth or something like that. So probably like a week before, like dropping Floyd's gear off right before the fight, just something like that. Yeah. Um, and there's always a. Pr- it's actually really funny. You, funny you say that because. There's actually one of uh, like two two people that were like, "Hey, it it wasn't this Jamie Fox picture taken like months ago." I'm like <laughs> the one person that actually realizes that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's no, hilarious. It's crazy but... though. It's like crazy that you've, and, and it is like a domino effect. Like if you uh-huh. go to the habits, pay, like if if you get a DM from Habits and then you scroll or you you click on the celebrities highlight, like you realize it's like 
you see other celebrities and you're like, oh, this isn't just like yeah, some kid running a brand or like mm-hmm. out of their yeah, basement. Yeah, yeah. So that's exactly like the credibility factor. Mm-hmm. Uh, the yep. blue check obviously helps, but let's yeah. talk ambassadors because you said yeah. a big, big portion of your sales are from ambassadors from their codes yep. and all that good stuff. I think you have like over 5,000 ambassadors. Yep, yep. over correct? 5,000. Yep. Impressive. So like, what's the, what's the draw for being an ambassador, I guess. And like, what, like what, I know there's like this awesome com- community behind it. Like, can you just tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much uh, we've really utilized ambassadors for, for creative purposes. Like our ambassadors are super, super important. A lot of them, help with designs just with marketing um and yet pretty much we we have an application we have kind of a we have a system of accepting we don't accept everyone but we accept a a a really nice amount of people every day so yeah it's just people that want to want to really dive deep into the creative process behind habits and obviously like not all of them are so into it but there's a good amount of people that that move further along the brand. And like, I mean, I I'd say half our, ha, m- maybe more than half our staff, like we have a staff of like about 20 people. They, you, they started off as ambassadors and now they're on a payroll. Like they're, they're really like important to the brand. Like in terms of, in terms of just the main, the main events going on with, with habits. Uh, yeah, no. So we're, we're just continuing to grow that. Obviously, you saw, you mentioned the Facebook page. That's really important. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, what do you get out of it for being like an ambassador? Like, what does that yeah, mean? Yeah. So pretty much, pretty much being an ambassador, you get a discount code in which you can receive commission off of. You can possibly get paid for design. Like, if you make a design and we end up releasing it, you either get a cut of all sales or you get an upfront payment. Obviously, not everyone likes to make designs, so we have room for, like, they they can market with us and, like, possibly get paid for that as well. Like, if they throw us a good idea, we'll we'll cut them a check if, if it's a real idea, if it's a real good idea. And, yeah, we, we, we've, we're continuing to kind of, to kind of mesh out what we actually can do to improve the ambassador program, meaning we want more ways to in, to have them in, interact with each other like like brendan said the facebook group's really important and that's going really well um but we're trying to think of some sort of rewards program mm-hmm. so and and that that we can use to our leverage for releases for like ambassadors can get early products before months before they're released and kind of stuff along that lo- along those lines yeah, for like the people that want to build like an ambassador group, like you guys have five thousand. That's a lot. Like, how yeah. did you even like get started on getting like the first hundreds? You know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, it was all it. Well, at first, it was just word of mouth and literally f- friends of mine telling their friends to become an ambassador, and then that's when we started Facebook advertising, and pretty much like from the start, I, from the start of COVID, that's when we started our Facebook ads on, on our ambassador program. And from there, it just kind of took off. Like we put celebrities and we put real people wearing our brand on an ad. And we said, we want ambassadors. Here's what you have to do to become an ambassador. Here's what you do when, when you are an ambassador and yeah, just kind of, kind of stuff like that. And yeah, it just kind of, it's kind of took off. Um, Yeah. And that's like our most, that's probably our biggest advertisement that we have now. Yeah, no, definitely. It's, it's a good concept and it just, it's a way of getting people like super into the brand. And it's like, I'm not going to just buy this piece mm-hmm. of clothing. It's like, I'm going to buy this piece of clothing and like connect with other <coughs> people who are like trying to turn their bad habits into good habits and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it's definitely like yeah, exactly. that cool draw. So obviously this is the dropouts podcast. Um, we got to ask you, why did you go to college? If you, if you're crushing it with habits, like is yeah. there a specific reason? Yeah, honestly, like to give you the real answer, because I, I do think college is important. However, when you're an entrepreneur, I don't think college is as important if, if that makes sense. But I went to college because that's what, that's what my family wanted. And I, I, I didn't want to, 
I, I didn't want to go against what they wanted. It, 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 didn't, it didn't even matter how much money I was or wasn't making. It was just in terms of just getting a, like forming relationships with people, getting a college degree, st- making more connections with people that can, that can help my endeavors in the future with habits and with anything else that I start. Yeah, it, it, was, just, it was just pretty much primarily my family thought it was best for me. So I, I just listened to them and now, and now I'm here. So yeah, yeah, we both went for like one year and I, mm-hmm. I think it was super beneficial. Cause like you, I mm-hmm. feel like every person kind of has to experience the college experience. Yeah. It's like, it's just so different. Like you get yeah. to build like your social skills. You're just like thrown in this group, like just yeah. you and mm-hmm. you just got to like live it. I basically yeah. Yeah. Like learn. So Yep, exactly. There's yeah. definitely pluses and minuses to both. No, th- yeah, there's definitely pluses and minuses. Like, don't get me like, don't get me wrong. There's definitely, there's definitely like college isn't so like I feel like it's more for connection building than for learning. I know that sounds a little radical, but that's just my opinion. No, um, I totally agree. Yeah. Like, e- like I'm I'm still pretty close with a lot of the people that like I could send twenty people a text and get an answer within like thirty seconds. So it's like. Mm-hmm. It's just I, I'm glad I experienced it, and the social aspect is like great. It's just mm-hmm. I don't know. It's I guess it's not for me. I, I yeah, no, I, I yeah. classes, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I, like I mean, there's there's obviously pluses and minuses. Yeah, yep. Wait, where do you go to college? Yeah, so I I go to University of Miami. So I'm I'm here right now, but I go home in a few days. Wait, you switched? Um, yeah, yeah. So I I transferred here in. <laughs> that's so funny that you didn't. I I swear I told you, but uh, yeah. <laughs> So um, I, I went to Wisconsin initially, but I had gotten into Miami in the spring. So kind of the whole plan was to go there for a semester and then just come here in the spring because I got in here for the spring for entrepreneurship. Um, yeah, so that's, that's even awesome. better because you got you have, now you have your Wisconsin connections and you have yep. your Miami connections. Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. No, it, it, it worked out really well. And now, I mean, you've seen my Instagram like I've, I've been able to meet some pretty cool people down here. Yeah, um, I'm yeah, sure. it's, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 really fun down here. So how how's the COVID over there? Like, yeah, I mean, it's obviously like honestly slowing down just because a lot of people are get. I'm I'm fully vaccinated personally. Like a lot of my friends are fully vaccinated, so it's a little more. I mean, Florida's extremely open. Like, there's no, <laughs> there's really no rules or regulations down here to be honest. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 definitely more open than most places. So I'd I'd say it hasn't really affected me. Um, kind of in like I'm not going out every single day to like to brickle. Like I'm not like, but on the weekends it that's when most people go out. So I'd say COVID's not really like it hasn't been too bad down here. So is it like I know I know in Florida there's not like regulations, but. Does U of Miami like require you to wear masks? Yeah, and stuff? yeah. So I have to wear a mask like everywhere, even though I'm fully vaccinated. But I mean, they don't, they don't really take that into consideration, just because that's part of their, their, their look. If if you know what I mean by that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, but I mean that's kind of annoying. But I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, hopefully this this all comes to an end soon. Yeah, but it will. Yeah. yeah. To to wrap this up, like if. If there's, I know a lot of kids start a clothing brand for their first business. It's like one of those things that everybody wants to start. Like you mm-hmm. see it in high school, you see like 10 kids start a clothing brand. So like, yeah. if there's anybody like that watching this, is there like a certain piece of advice or, or just like any guidance you can give them like real quick? Um, yeah. Yeah. I, and do? yeah, to, to be completely honest, like I'd say my best piece of advice is, I, I mean, I'm not going to say don't listen to people, but do what you want to do. Don't don't like listen to your six friends. No, do this, do that, do that. Do what go go with your gut in terms of what you want to start. And then and, and be very patient because I, I did not think that I mean, I'm not going to say my brand's huge, but like my brand is we're, we're on the map. Like we're, we're like a lot of people know who we are. So I, but I, I'm going to I'm going to pretty much say. Be really patient in terms of, oh, I need my brand to blow up in in a month. Uh, Like that's not how any that's not how any business works. You just have to be patient. Let it just learn from your mistakes and just 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 do it. Don't don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. Just just go have fun and see where see where it takes you. I'd say. Yeah, love love that. 
Yeah. I, have, I have one more question I like to yeah. ask in, like, every podcast. If you would go back in time, like, if you were a kid, like, what would you do differently? Yeah, um, well, in terms of, in terms of what exactly? Like, just in general, like, the mistakes that you wish you, like, started earlier. Yeah, or... yeah. I'd say not being so rash in my deci- decision making. I feel like when I was younger, I would always do something so quick without thinking about it, whether that be good or bad, m- mostly bad. But just th- <laughs> thinking more about my decisions is definitely something I would do. And actually evaluating the pros and the cons of those decisions, I'd say that I'd say that's that's really helpful, that's especially really- when you're young. It's like I don't know when I was younger I would like buy, I would like be so stupid sometimes I would like yeah. buy like a thousand dollars worth of like something absolutely yep. ridiculous like like in in app purchases especially yeah I would <laughs> just... those are the worst like yeah and then I don't know I would I, like you just gotta sleep on stuff sometimes mm-hmm. like give yep. it a night and then you're like that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of but yeah thanks for coming on this was fun yeah no and thanks yeah, for having me yeah plug yourself where can where can people find habits on yep. tiktok instagram so, yep we're on tiktok instagram facebook and our website is habits 365.com h-i-b-i-t-s 365.com you can also search us up on google and our website will come up some articles will come up and yeah that's that's pretty much where you can find us and, and buy some habits merch Good stuff. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on. Yeah, no, thanks guys for having me. Really had fun. Um, of course, yeah. thank you. Yep.